All right. Yeah. So, um, well, to some extent, I would say uh, you guys are correct. And also, like, in this class, we'll talk about the mechanism behind how these things work, the technologies used, and uh, give an overview of what they are basically. So, um, coming in, let me share my screen. So, um, looking at the web applications we have, and also the mobile applications we have, right? You have Facebook. You have different categories of um, applications, right? Um, you have um, social media applications. You have um, fintech hubs, and also you have uh, related applications. But then, the underlying mechanism of the workings of these um, applications and websites are still sort of the same. But looking at Facebook, right? You are seeing, uh, hey, please, can, can you see my screen? Yes, you can see it. All right. So if I should go to Facebook or any um, website, you can see that, okay, I have this input, this front, uh, let's, let's call it UI, before me, taking several inputs. I am able to interact with this and also like send data somewhere. But then where does my data go, right? What happens to the data which I am working with? How is it processed? Um, what is the architecture behind uh, how this thing works? So those are the things we'll be explaining today. And um, I'll quickly like want to like take a touch on um, the fields in programming. Oh, everybody wants to like learn about programming, but then you have to know that there are various um, fields, right? You have um, software application developer. You have um, web. You can be a web developer. You can be a computer system engineer, and like that. But then, for the scope of this class, we'll be focusing on web development. So. What is web, um, the website for the internet? Mostly by right? Team Marco almost have like, okay, to be a web developer, you have to have understanding of HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And as we go on with the um, class, I guess, like, you know, what these technologies mean and how you can use them. So before we dive in into how the web works, basically, I want to like give an overview of um the different niche that are available in web development so we have like various field of programs you can dive into but for this class we'll be focusing on web development and for web development you have the front end you have the back end and then you have like full stack so what is front end what is back end does anybody have any idea Yeah, uh, one has go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I think our front end deals with the graphics, like the physical appearance, and uh, the back end, uh, I think it should, if front end is the physical appearance and the graphics, then back end should be like the work behind it. I don't know if I'm right. Then the third one, I I think I have no idea about that. Thank you. All right. Yeah, awesome. But thank you for giving it a try. Emmanuel, go ahead. Okay. Front end is the user interface that is using an HTML, CSS, and basic JavaScript to build UI. That is the user interface. Why the back end is what connects the front end and probably the database together. Then full stack is a combination of both the front end, the back end, and the database. So you can see you are a full stack um, developer, meaning you work on both front end and back end and also database. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Great contributions. So basically, in addition to what um, the other guys have said, right, um, I would like to like touch on 
uh, what do we call it, uh, web one, web two, web three, do it's not, I forgot to add it to my resource course. I like made it in a rush, basically. Apologies for that. Yeah, looking at this interface now, you're just seeing, okay, this is the UI, right? You have the text, and I'm commonly trying to turn a bit more about, I'm sorry, just that. Let's just go on the Facebook example. So looking at this now, you have um, this form that says create account. Yeah, this, um, yeah, the, the UI is beautiful and everything, but then this uh, UI is useless without any interactivity. So the person, so the, the, the person in charge of, okay, um, coming up with the UI, uh, turning like the Figma design into code and doing all those things is basically someone we call a front-end developer and the process is called front-end development. So the set of tools utilized, the set of technologies utilized by um, this kind of people are, are HTML, CSS, and also images of JavaScript. And then what is HTML, what is CSS? Take for instance, you, you, yes, you are a human being, right? You have your skin. You have your um, other points, you have your bone, and then you have the inner mechanism which contains the liver, the intestine, and other things working um, underneath the good, right? So, looking at HTML, HTML is like the markup, right? Contains the same task for putting on, mm -hmm. for writing the text here, yeah, writing um, the create account, and having this include field, having this um, date and these buttons. So as we proceed on with the class, you see, you see how to like utilize HTML and stuff like that. But then using the HTML alone, right, it makes our um, website sort of redundant because there's no aesthetics to it and everything. So to give it aesthetics and beauty, mm -hmm. that is where CSS comes in. CSS basically means uh, cascading style sheets. Um, right, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's the meaning. So it's basically for you to like lay out your design in uh, the way you, you want, depending on how, how your design is structured. And then, so you can liken the CSS to your skin, right? So if you understand it now, right, which is like the map, map uh, the map of the human uh, figure, and then the skin to like beautify and protect your uh, your skeleton. So, so what gives interactivity to a person? That is where the brain comes in. That is where the nerves and the other components sort of comes in. Sorry, I, I just giving this instance. So it's, you feel that okay, it's something you can um, sort of relate with. Now, looking at this, basically, uh, what if you want to like add some sort of animations, do some manipulation and like add interactivity to your website? And for logic handling, that is where your JavaScript also comes in. So basically, this is that's the um what front end development is basically you build a UI for a particular website and then you add interactivity to it and also um collaborate with the designer to bring um, the design to, to into code and into life. So this is the um, architecture of um, front-end development, like the roadmap, basically. So you have to like learn HTML first, and once you get comfortable with that, you go to a CSS library. It's always advisable to like learn pure CSS first. And what do I mean by pure CSS? Um, just like everything in life, right? There is the crude approach, and also there is um, the approach where you have like certain um, tooling applicable to you that makes um, the earlier process easier. So, using CSS frameworks it relieves you of the stress of writing pure CSS. As we proceed in the class, we get to like see see this. Sorry, do we understand what I've said so far? Any questions so far? So you don't understand. I can talk to myself. Are we following the class, please? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll follow you. 
Any questions so far? Okay. Yeah, I can see your hand, so what's your question? Yeah, um, you said pure CSS. Yeah. And i like forced to ask what we are doing on FreeCodeCamp. Is it pure CSS or it's just something like confined for one to just start this stuff? Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, I would have, I, I don't have a good example here, I would have showed you. But pure CSS just basically involves you to like, um, you do the normal adding the CSS file into your HTML and you write the syntax in a separate file. That's what I mean by pure CSS. But now if you're writing uh, with framework or you're using, yeah, you're using a framework such as, let's say, Bootstrap or Tailwind, there are already available classes which you can use. So as we go further in this um, course, you can, like, tend to like learn um, the differences and um, what these things are. So basically, I would answer that what you're doing currently on Fitco Camp is pure CSS, right? Because you give your um, HTML markup an identifier, and then you style the um, element based on that identifier, right? Are you clear on that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So like we established that to be a front end developer, the um, basics you have to know, you have to know HTML, you have to know CSS. And also when it comes to after like doing that, you have to um, take a step forward to JavaScript, right? JavaScript enables you to manipulate the DOM. And as time goes by, we'll see what the DOM is, but just have it at the back of your mind that we are going to like touch all these things. So you have, you learn JavaScript and then, um, so JavaScript is a um, dynamically typed language, right? So um, the superset of JavaScript is TypeScript. What do I mean by dynamically typed? Such that um, it takes, there is no like, uh, strict way to distinguish between, uh, should I say one data type to another? But then uh, if you're dealing with TypeScript now, you can explicitly state that, okay, I want this. If you have uh, something, if you're giving, it's, I don't want to say function, because I don't know how um, uh, background is, but pardon me, let me know if anything seems confusing to you, but just explain the difference between TypeScript is like, you have, um, okay, let's say you have a house, right? Let's say you've learned JavaScript and then, for instance, I'm just, what I don't want to use this screen different between JavaScript and TypeScript. So you have a house, right? And the rules specify that. And the rules specify that, okay, you want um, only boys to enter your house. Right, okay. Any boy can just enter the house because you didn't like especially state that, okay, I want the boys within this um, certain uh, age limit or something like that. So, but now taking it a step further in, C in um, TypeScript. So, TypeScript gives you the functionality to like explicitly state that, okay, I want, um, let's liken the boy now to a data type. I want, okay, only. Um, a person of to to enter my house. So if the person is not of that age or is not of that um, uh, criteria you've mentioned, the um, they won't like the person won't like be allowed in. So TypeScript is basically like you um, specifying that okay, these are the rules and your functions and your logic you're writing must be in accordance to your rule. Anything that goes against that rule, it's it won't be uh, valid. The compiler will throw error. That's like the simplest um, uh, example I can give without going into the technicality. But we'll see that along the way, like when we get to JavaScript. Any questions so far? Can I proceed, please? Mm -hmm. Hello, oh, sorry. Can continue, please. Yeah, please, I would just like to like state something. Uh, while we are on the call, like encourage us to give feedback. That, that we are know that, oh, like the, the, the class has been um, following, the class is falling along and I'm not, I'm not talking to myself. 
And please feel free to ask any question whenever you feel confused or you get I mean, I need mention of something you don't understand. Yeah. So like we stated, basically, you have your HTML, you have CSS, you have JavaScript, and then now to the frame, to the styling frameworks, you have Bootstrap, you have Tailwind, and we'll see how these things work, basically. So now you've, we know that we can write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to build the interface. But then, once you start writing this, you get to like see some challenges and see that okay, there are like better ways you can um, maybe um, these things work. So developers like you and myself like came up together to like build frameworks, build libraries, and also to to make development easier, to make um, to give us design patterns and uh, basically reusability of code. So some front-end frameworks you see, you see Angular, and I forgot to add Next.js here. React is the library of the framework. Next.js is the uh, framework. But basically, don't like worry yourself about what these things are. But you see them, you get to like, see them in video. So React, um, Angular, Vue.js, Next year is jQuery and the likes. So in a, in a, in a, in a nutshell, front-end development is basically like creation of like the user interface for your web application or also your um, mobile app, basically. And the person that does um, that, that is responsible for that um, work is referred to as a front-end developer. Now, you might be thinking, what is the difference between a front-end developer and a front-end engineer? There is like a significant difference. A front-end developer is just focused on writing the um, code and making things work, while a front-end engineer has more solid uh, understanding of uh, the computer science um, aspect of it in terms of system design and architecture and um, how things work, basically. So um, do we understand what front-end development is, uh, what um, the responsibility of a front-end developer? Yeah. Yes. We're good to go, right? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. All right. Thanks. So moving to back-end now. So I'll go back to my, um, to my Facebook form. OK. Now I uh, filled my name. And so everything is uh, really different. Right? So they requesting me to put in some data and oh, uh, check with. Mm -hmm. Sorry, give me a minute. So after feeling, um, choosing the gender and stuff, I have to sign up. Where does the information go? What happens basically? What am I going to do from there? So the person, the the aspect that that handles that is basically, um, I will talk about the. Um, back end development. So I'll just like explain. Say this is your front end with some um, design. Let's see. Some inputs basically. Some inputs. So what happens? So Backend development is basically the um, the developing the process of writing your business logic. You know, every um, every web application or every uh, or every product you tend to build has its own business logic. Take for instance, if you're building a fintech, your idea might be to bridge uh, cross-border payments. 
and also you have a business activity, you have a living selling point. So like make these things work, right? If you're building uh oh yes. Just to hold on to that example. So so when you feel this um so okay, um sorry, one thing another um something to clear for season. This and then now we have the back end here, right? So you have the okay, let's say you have your front end here. So the back end is often referred to as um what do we have so this uh yeah so as i was saying so um, the back end is basically you writing your business logic right and your business logic differs depending on the um, application you're writing but then it allows you to have uh to specify um there's one concept that i have to explain okay so the tools you need to like build your uh back end are basically um uh, you can use different languages like uh, java um php node.js node.js is like um javascript or typescript or is running on the server so if you have understanding of um, javascript or typescript you can easily pick up node.js instantly so you have this language to specify your business logic and also you need something so i can't just be filling my facebook um info or be registering there's some there's some way the data is going so you have uh, something like a database right on the back end how do i drop this one Sorry, right. I'll be explaining some things. Uh, it's not on the serial. Uh, apologies for that. So you have the database now, right? And you specify your business logic here. So basically, I have my front. I have my uh, client, which is my uh, front end. So, which is the front end and i have the back end which contains my business logic so now you can see that i'm sending a data right sorry are we following please yes 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 you are following so you see the um the name the phone number the date of birth gender and everything the data that i'm sending to the back end right so how does this thing happen so it's basically you have um something called client server interaction so such that i can the front end can interact with the back end the back end can also interact with the front end and the ways this happen is basically um through um, something called crowd uh, functionality so you can um So um, I would like to like touch on something pretty quickly. So now before we touch on um, the crowd functionality, can you please mute your mic, please? Emmanuel, before, yeah, thank you very much. So let's quickly touch on web one, web two, and web three. Basically, the first iteration uh, of the web was web one, where you have um, really only because you have like static page that shows you okay some text and images you can read through it but then you can't interact with it you can't do anything on it right so those are basically just html and css um, sort of implementation 
then came the evolution of work too that involves you to like read, write, and also like make custom um, um, customizations to the data you can generate to the data you have, you can interact that's where uh, platforms like Facebook, Twitter came came about. But then this gives a lot this gives gave a lot of flexibility and a whole new perspective to how people connect, right? And if I'm wondering, okay, this model works successfully. I mean people are connected. I can create a content or medium, I can create a video, I can share the vision of where I am and that of the But then the issue is oh the um What do we call them now? The uh, the owners of this platform, the Facebook, for instance, they have like total ownership of our data, right? That was what brought about um, with the uh, how many people remember when Facebook sort of like went off, nobody has access to Facebook or something like that, right? Everyone was like fidgeting or what and things like that. So that's one of the problems that they solve ownership of data and also anonymity and permissionless uh, uh, um, permissionless and openness uh, and, and open uh, web. So I would like to like explain more on that but I think we does I'll, I will share resources for for you to dig more on that and you can like revert to me if you have any question. So going back now, we already established that the backend is how we create our business logic, right? And then there must be a way for our front end to be able to like interact with what is on our backend, right? So that is where the concept of um, right of, uh, of interaction sort of comes in. And the idea of client server interaction is you have your front end interacting with your back end, and your front end can either perform um, any of these four operations. It can either like um, write to the back end or read from the back end or update the data to the back end. So when you send a particular information from here, please let me know if we are confused at any point in time, so I would like... Are we still following, please? Yes, we are following, I can hear you. Okay. Something like this. Sorry, don't mind my sketch. So, you send some data here, Action might be okay. Are you um are you requesting to like write to the um to the back end or you're requesting to like write to the bar to the uh, or read from the back end? And what I mean by read from the back end, you know, as your um right. So whatever information you are giving from the back end, you need what we call it, we need a place to store uh, this data. So that's where the concept of database sort of comes in. So this um, specify uh, your business logic and also this allows for store, uh, storage of data. So you can either write to the storage, read from the storage or modify data from the storage. That's where the crowd functionality basically um, comes in. So, um, so we've made mention that you use any of these languages to like come to your back end and then you have like the front end aspect to your frameworks you use such as um, Django, Flux. So for each programming language, each programming language has their own um, framework. You're making use of Node.js, you have uh, um, frameworks such as Express available to you and also um, I think is I think there's this new one, I'm not sure. I can't remember the name. And if you're using Python, you have Django and Flask available to you. So that's just basically. And then 
for storage, you have um, database such as uh, relational database and non-relational database. I don't like going into that. That's one set of technicality on its own. So backend is the server side of the website. It's part of the web website that the user cannot see cannot see, but they can interact with you. It's the portion of the software that does not come in direct contact with the user. So you, you, you as a user, you're just interacting with a different thing. You don't know what's going on on the back end, right? Because you contain your business logic and it's not something visual to the to the eyes. So um, it's basically the functionality it does is it stores and arrange data and then gives you data back. And uh, I want to touch on something. Uh, I don't know if I should like go into it yet. Uh, so, I have any questions so far before I continue? Yeah, it's a call off. Any questions so far? Hello, can you guys hear me? Oh, we can hear you. I don't see the access, but for me, I don't have any questions. All right. Okay, let's just um, continue. Okay, do we have someone hands up? If your hand is up, just shoot your question. Go ahead. Okay, I want to ask that through this course, are we going to learn any of the back end languages? So, um, okay, I forgot to course is for now is focused on just front end development, right? The um course is to um make you like train you to become a front end developer. Or is it if if it is back end up? What's your interest? I think the most um, one of the resources that was shared um, is Fritco Camp. There's a um, backend development track there, so you might you can take that on your own. But um, there's a roadmap for um, backend development too. But as we um, go through front end, we we'll have one or two things to do with backend one get your other, but like be going in depth. Right, because it's a different um, learning curve and a different path on its own. Right, so that's what I can say about that. Did I answer your question? Yes, yes, thank you. All right. So, okay, we've seen the front end and we've established that, okay, this is your UI. You can customize it whatever way you want. And this data can be sent to uh, the back end to process, either to store or to like retrieve. So, how does the web work basically? So how the web works provide a simplified view of what happens when you view a web page in your web browser on your computer or phone. So, so this story is not really like essential per se, but then it's good to like have understanding of this so you can engage in conversation outside. So we said something about so client server interaction, the client, which is the front end request for either some data or request to send some data to the server, which is the backend in this case. And then the server gives a response. So it's just like two people communicating, right? I complete, yeah, let's uh, say the client is uh, A now, and then the server is B. If they should make a request to B, definitely B is going to like be back to A. So there is a back and forth communication. And how what is this back and forth communication is possible? That is where we um, come about the concept of an application programming interface. I forgot to add to the material um, APIs.
So the API basically like define like some set of rules, right? Define set of rules that enables different applications to communicate with each other. So it has like an intermediary layer that processes data between system, letting one application uh, like that processes data between um, systems, right? So uh, doing, okay, let's just like see something quickly. The simple way to understand how API works is to look at a simple example. So what I can see is take for instance make sure um everyone knows how you can see like right? so now you are you as a person for instance you are like a client go to the library right let's take the library to the web you go to the library and then you need someone at the library you request for a book right you meet a request now right and the librarian there now sort of works like your API like a messenger okay get me a book so so, so book the librarian now which we is the API in this case goes to the database right the database now is like the catalog of books available in the library please are we following the analogy right are we following this yes yes yeah so i don't mind i just want to like explain like on some piece of what api uh, so the librarian goes to the catalog to search for whatever book you're looking for and if the book is available it comes back to you right gives you a response that oh, this book is available if it's available right certain conditions will be put in place to specify okay should um okay for how long are you uh picking the book out of the library and if you're taking it beyond a certain um, uh, time, this is a penalty for this and that. You know, you specified some sort of business or technology that we had. The librarian now is executing that system logic. So the, system, the business logic now is the, the business logic here is the rule that the library came up with. Okay, you are giving up the, this uh, steps that should be followed, right? And and once the requirement that means the books, the book is given out, right? So that way you add some sort of a client in time to the server, and then the server gives you some sort of response back, right? And we we said we let you establish that there are uh, different ways in which you can communicate. Uh, not like different ways, there are like uh, four actions which you can do perform basically you can either like you can with to the API to dynamic right to the backend right or to read from the backend or to update something from the backend or to delete something in the backend basically that's the idea that's that like the surface level of how API works uh, now going into like the technicality how uh, we are going to like see concepts such as then uh, SO SOAP and the likes, but I would just want to like convince us, confuse us with those technologies. But at the lowest level, do we like get what um, APIs are? Just... Please, am I speaking to anybody on the call? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yes, yes, you can hear me. Yeah. 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 So uh, looking at how the web works, basically, clients are to become a uh, user that connected devices. For example, your computer is connected to your Wi-Fi, or your phone connected to your mobile network, and web accessing social really on those um, devices, usually a web browser like Chrome or Firefox. Servers are computer that are stored web pages, sites, or apps. When a client wants to access a web page, or like that is a copy of a web page is downloaded from the server onto the client's machine to be displayed in the um, user's web browser. So basically now, when, uh, when the client wants to access a particular resource, right, those resources are gotten from the end 
and then formatted in a readable um, format and then processed and then displayed on the front end to, to the user. So this is what this place is saying basically. So we've seen the client's aspect, we've seen the server aspect, and then we've been introduced like a bit into um, the technicality of how these things work and the, the technologies involved. But then what are the other components that makes uh, this thing work the way it does? So the other part of the toolbox, uh, the client and server are described above. Describe and we don't tell the whole story. There are many other parts involved and we will describe them briefly. So for now, let's imagine that the web is a, is a road. On one end of the road is the client, which is like your house. On the other end of the road is the server, which is a shop you want to buy something from, right? Please follow the analogy. So we've established that, okay, the client is like into your house and then the, um, what do we call it? The server is like into your um, Sure. So in addition to the client and server, we also like need to like know of some concepts such as your internet connection. Of course, before you can access any web um, page or any application, you need uh, internet. Just as you need internet to like join this call now. So it allows you to send and receive data on the web. It's basically like uh, the streets between your house and your shop. So you need uh, to um there's a concept called the transmission control protocol and internet protocol. So this specifies like medium of communication uh, on the net. Yeah. So please give me a minute. So transmission control protocol and internet protocol communication protocol that defines how data should travel across the internet. This is like a transport mechanism that lets you place an order, right? Go to the shop and buy your goods. In our example, this is like a car or a bike or however else you want to like get around. Then you have the domain names, the uh, domain DNS, domain name system is like an address book for websites. When you type a web address in your browser, the web address looks at the DNS to find the website IP address before it can retrieve the site. The web browser needs to find out what um, server the website lives on so it can send an http request to the right place so what this is saying is basically like okay you have facebook.com the computer like the internet as known as so the 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 basic idea now is once you're creating it once you're using your website and then you're done mm -hmm. and then you like deploy it to production or something the uh, an IP address is like it to, is given to uh, that your web application, right? That's like, okay, this is where this is living, this is where this website is living, right? This is where this website is living. Um, so for humans now, humans can't like remember the number of offhand. Because I can't possibly want to go to Facebook and I'll be tracking on, uh, what do you call it? Uh, let's say, or something, one to, one to seven slash, zero point one slash, one, one, something like that. It's not easy to remember. So, what do we do? Basically, that is where the um, domain name system comes in. You can assign, you can map or assign a name to this. In the middle of the score, the internet is not how to like process that information. Um, the IP address to locate the particular website you are looking for. Do we get that? Can I continue, please? Uh, yes. Alright. Tell us basically about um, that and DNS. So HTTP now. Means refers to iPod transfer protocol. It's an application protocol that defines a language for client and server to speak to each other. This is like the language you use to order goods. So these are examples like state changes and how uh to be stateless. Yeah, basically. So this like enables 
to like uh, specify which in which you want and you create your APIs and things like that. So component file, the website is made up of many different files, which are like part of the goods you want to buy from the shop. These components, these files come in two types. You have the code file and then you have the assets file. Websites are built primarily from HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, though you uh, get to like see other uh, technologies later. So assets basically refers to collection of um, other stuff that you can use on your um, website. You can I, I, I can say that we've seen websites with um, icons, images, video, uh, documents, PDFs, and stuff. So just concept that refer to as um, assets. So how does everything sort of fit in like basically with the explanation we've given? So the browser, the browser goes to, so say we want to like access Facebook in this case now. The browser goes to the DNS server and find the real address of the server that the website lives on. So you find the address of the shop, like there's like a shop to Facebook now. Remember our road, um, the road example that if you like in your house to your client, and like in the server to the shop, right? The browser sends an HTTP request message. The browser sends an HTTP request message to the server asking it to send a copy of the website to the client. You go to the shop and order your goods. That's just giving an example. This message and all other data sent between the client and server is sent across your internet using the um, transmission control, transmission TCIP, transmission control protocol, basically. If the server approves the client request, the server sends a client 200 OK message. So uh, now the person asked about who oh, are we to like touch on um, back end. So the backend itself has like its own learning code, basically. So um, we already established that you have client to server interactions. And so there are sometimes when you like, if you send the correct format of information to the backend, to the server, the server is going to give you a response. And if, if that response is valid, right, it's going to like give you a response of, okay, 200. So those are referred to as um, status code, the status code of a request. So I, I mean, I know that quite a number of us have experienced like um, error 404 page not found. That's a status code. That's what the backend guys use. And if you are sending an unprocessable request, there's a status code for that. So now if the server approves the client's request, the server sends the client a 200 okay message, which means, of course, you can look at the website. Here it is that it renders you what, what you need, right? And then start sending the website files to the browser as a series of small chunk called data packets. This all gives you your goods and you bring them back to your house. The browser assembles the small chunk into complete web page and displays it to you. The goods arrive at your door. So basically you're so once you like make this request, right? She now takes this content from the server and tries to like render them to you. It brings all those components together and trying to like so now you're requesting from certain resources from the server and the server renders those data to you, but how is this um, processed? When the brother sends requests to links, um, an example of links is, uh, you know, uh, okay. You will see what links are basically like. What we mean by links is like how to like route to another page. Um, we we'll see that when you create your HTML. Um, element referencing external HTML style sheet and scripts which contain your JavaScript code. So it's important to know the order in which those files are passed by the browser and um, by the browser as the page loads as the browser loads the page. The browser passes the HTML file first and leads to uh, browser recognizing any link elements. 
the references uh, standard um, style sheet and any scripts. As the browser passes this email, it sends request back to the server for any CSS file it has found from the link elements and any JavaScript file it has found from the script elements. And from those, then it passes the CSS and JavaScript. So this, this process is basically referring to how, okay, you make a request to, let's say, a particular website and then it's trying to like render the UI to you. So it's fetching the markup, fetching the CSS, fetching the JavaScript at the same time. So once it fetches these things, this beautiful UI so you are able to like interact with it. As the browser built as the browser built the DOM tree at the back of your mind is still something we discuss extensively and applies the style from the um CSS tree and, ex and executes the JavaScript the visual representation of your page is painted to the screen and the user sees the page content and then begins to interact with it. So um, doing these processes manually uh, so, uh, can be somehow slow. That's one um, um, advantage. Um, frameworks tend to like give you, right? Where you can like bring it up the functionality of your HTML CSS and JavaScript into one file, right? It makes it lighter and um, you can also like do some sort of things using on the server, right? So we would like get in, in depth into that, but at the surface level, this is how you, you render pages, you um, render the pages on GI for, for the users to, to see and interact with. So um, this is what like basically like explains more in depth of about what GNS are. So real web addresses are really nice, you know, real string. You type into your address bar to find your favorite website. There are special numbers like 63.245.215.20. Of course, if this were to be Facebook um, something, it's, it's quite difficult to memorize given the amount of information on within months process daily. So this is called an IP address and it represents a unique location on the web. However, it is not easy to remember it. That's why domain name service were invented. There are special servers that match up a web address you type into your browser, like mozilla.org or facebook.org. Website can be reached directly via the IP address. So if you need to like, I'll drop this material as one as the class is done on the WhatsApp page. So you can use the DNS lookup to find the address of the website. Okay, let's check out one. Check out facebook.com. So this is the IP address of um, Facebook, basically. And I think the server location is in the So when you're facebook.com, the server basically, like there are server that, in, that um, browse to like look for this things, just looks for this IP address and something. So say we go to, um, Go to facebook.com or something, you should render. Yeah, this name is like it doesn't, doesn't exist yet. So, if you have, if you want to be the Facebook clone or you want to like it's Facebook, you can name your own um, web, web app facebook.com. So, once you like uh, buy a DNS and you upload everything, your IP address is assigned. Um, this this name so can you like make more research on uh, on that so talking about what, what are packets basically we, so earlier we made we use the term packets to describe the format in which data is sent from server to clients what do we mean here basically when data is sent across the option uh, is sent in small packets so they are sometimes dropped or corrupted it's easier to replace small chunk when this happens additionally the packets can be routed along different parts making the exchange faster and allowing many different users to download the same website at the same time even 
if each website was sent as a single chunk, only one user can download it at a time, which obviously would make the um, web very efficient and not much fun to use. So basically, this is like describing um, how um, the format in which data is sent. So it is sent in small chunks such that many people can make a uh, server request to it. If it's being sent in a language, it reduces the speed and makes it somehow inaccessible. Right. So, uh, as time as as the class gets more advanced, right, we see more, uh, we get to like understand more about the complexity of how these things work and um, what they are being get for at the surface level for this class, basically. So this this is like the um, good introduction to uh, how the web works and front end. Uh, so any questions so far? Please. Please, you guys should ask questions because to me, we should ask if I'm like talking to myself, what would what you do class? I mean, even even if it's if it is a question that I uh, you need more explanation on, we can check out probably check out the YouTube videos like see the visual representation of all these things kind of so just feel free to ask your question whatever is on your mind. Okay, good evening. Can you hear me? Firstly, I want to thank you for sharing your thoughts. Not everyone to do that. What I want to say meant since last year, but I wouldn't want to interfere with um, the pace of others. So the PDF, I don't know if you have PDF for this slide use this evening so that we can read in depth. Not everything you just said we are going to get this evening just like that so we some of us we usually read things like that so i don't know if we can get the pdf maybe after the call we can post it in the whatsapp group chat yes yes of course of course i will be sharing the pdf and also additional resources i as a person of some that gets uh based on reading articles and also uh, watching uh, visual um representation of what i'm trying to like learn so I have a couple of resources I feel would help to understand this concept, so I'll be dropping them in the um, channel. Are we good on that? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other question or concerns you'd like to raise? Anybody? Yeah, um, during your session, you mentioned something about frameworks. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, so, uh, these frameworks, I'm trying to like understand what you mean by you can use all um, languages at the go in them. So it helps to make your work easier and faster. Is it that when you have a framework, you can write HTML, CSS, JavaScript, whatever you have in one single place. Uh, yes, basically that's the idea. So uh, you can see my screen, right? Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, I'm coming. I can't. I'm not sure if I have. Uh, it's here. Give me a minute. Uh, I mean, no, I, I want to.
Alles? So, das. I think I'll show you what I want to like say basically. But the idea now is using the framework, right? Uh, let me open what's good at page. So I can specify my HTML at the same time and also like use um, a framework like Tailwind to start my page. So I'm doing in, I'm doing like I'm writing my stylings here. So I'm doing like test to justify and whatever attribute I want to give these elements. Do you understand? So I don't have to like create a separate file that contains CSS that I'm writing CSS separately. And if I have any logic I want to implement, um, I think this page implements some sort of logic. And if I have any logic I want to implement, the conventional approach, logical cool approach, is for me to have a separate uh, JavaScript file. And I import Java, that JavaScript file into my uh, HTML and then be able to like, do whatever I want to do. But now using the framework, everything can be done in a page. Not in a page, like everything can be combined together. You can, you can combine both your HTML, your JavaScript, and your CSS together. Do you get? Yeah, I, I get you, I understand. So, um, in addition to that, the, I think this, I don't know if you've been told this, this, this program seems to like take you for, um, let's say, you can ask me to right? And as you, expand and get more knowledge in your skill sets you at the later hand i think the first month so six months you get introduced to how this trade box work and how you can uh, uh, utilize them to uh to better your development different box are being used by um industries like but are being used by um, various platforms to build their web app spots the foundation is quite crucial, so that we are taking to the route of HTML CSS and JavaScript first before you get introduced to any tiny um, framework or any um, JavaScript framework or anything like that. So, dear yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I guess no one has any question for me, right? Um, okay, no problem. So please feel free to go through um, the resource page. Um, if you're doing um, FreeCodeCamp or whichever platform you're choosing to learn, but I think FreeCodeCamp is the best. So if you, are, if you, if you have any blog please feel free to, to reach out to me and or any of the mentors on the, on the page so we can quickly clear up the confusion and um, answer whatever question you have. So I'll be dropping the uh, the material and the WhatsApp group now. Yeah. Um, let's see if I think we are pretty much done. No one has any questions. So that will be the end of um, my Yeah, I think someone is using is, uh, yeah, and, okay. Yeah, please go ahead with your question. Yeah. Yeah, good evening. Thank you. 
Uh, Sammy, I think you are breaking because we can't hear you. Sammy, I guess probably you should use the chat section because we can't hear you. Probably you are worked or something. Yeah, in order not to waste our time, as we've spent, I think, 18 minutes now. Yes, so. sorry. Yeah, it was my network. I'm just asking whether this JavaScript, you know, HTML, all that, they are back end or, or front end and development. So I don't want to ask them. JavaScript and the Java, what's the relationship? You know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to clear about that, please. Okay. Um, all right. Based on what we've discussed so far, can someone just quickly like chip in and uh, answer that question? I believe. Uh, so, it reflected that might be overwhelming, right? But I think someone should be able to answer the question based on what we've discussed. Anybody? That's on that. <coughs> Could you please repeat the question? So, the question is um, sorry, could you please repeat your question? Okay, my, my, question is, my question is, you know, uh, is HTML, JavaScript, and all that, are they, are they uh, front-end or back-end development? Then if then I'm trying to even also find out the, about Java and JavaScript, are they related? Are they the same? What's the difference between them? You know, yeah, thanks. Okay, I'm like to JavaScript are on that front end development and they are related. Mm, can we probably get back? No, yeah. is it Java and JavaScript? I say, I they Okay, the, 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 okay. just let, let me just answer that. Java, you know, so, there's Java, there's JavaScript. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Yeah. So, so to answer your question, uh, what she said was, right, in respect to the HTML, CSS, here, it doesn't come in. But yeah, there's a the difference between Java and JavaScript. <laughs> Java and Java, <laughs> the different programming languages you get. So that's, that's, that's the answer to that. Yeah, so you um, so just get that? OK, yeah, I got that. Yeah, uh, right. Then uh, the JavaScript and uh, what kind of, uh, is, it, is it backend, you know, HTML, JavaScript? The back end or front end, the Java two, the back end or front end development. So like, like, like I said on the call, right? JavaScript is basically how you add the interactivity to your um, front end, right? And we've discussed on the difference between front end and back end. Now, if you have understanding of JavaScript and you want to like delve into back end. No JS because it's your right JavaScript on the server side. So JavaScript on the server side now is what's the part of us with JS, JS. Now you can use server to do your backend implementation, JS. Because as you can see from this screen, I'm just there, and we have Java here, right? So Java is basically like tailored towards like you doing backend. But then Java, JavaScript is up front end, but then it can also be utilized on the back end aspect. So if you're utilizing JavaScript on the back end now, is when you're using those uh how do you call it no GS. Does that clear up the um, confusion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Thanks. Thank you.
Okay, it's like there is no other question. And yeah, so we spent I think eighty five minutes now. So I think the session is awesome and at least we blend one thing or the other and we're able to clear our doubts on probably what we don't understand or something. So you guys know the vibe now. Just go to Twitter, use the general hashtag blockchain the way you build. Then if you are building where if you are learning web two, for example, now this class is for web two, you can just use the way web two bootcamp, hashtag web two bootcamp. Yeah. Probably at the end of the whole at the end of the whole class. Okay. okay. Yeah, so at the end of the whole session, so we'll check probably the ISM question on Twitter depending on probably how you use the hashtag and I'm sure the person will be really open the person to secure a job, which I feel down will be better than probably giving the person little incentives. I don't know. That one is still under planning. So just make sure you use the Twitter hashtags and remember to build in public and remember to network among your colleagues as well. Let the group reform. It's not the time that you'll be asking question on probably about well, what is Java, what is this, what is that. Make the group lively sometimes. Just probably you can just drop some me or some spamming. No, no, no. There's no play of Twitter and no, you know, on Discord, I don't mean on Discord, I mean in the chats, in the group chat. Yeah, in, in, in the chats. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> yeah, okay, just no problem. Joking. Just joking, just joking. Yeah, just make sure you use the Twitter hashtag very well as it's really very important because if you are looking